In this video, we will review how to read a SKU-T log P thermodynamic diagram. You'll also be familiarized with some important variables that we will use throughout the course, and we will put some of those variables into the context of the SKU-T plots. This is a SKU-T log P plot. Hopefully you've seen one before. It is called such because the pressure coordinate on the vertical axis is plotted logarithmically to be roughly proportional to height. The temperature axis is skewed from lower left to top right, and we'll look at this uh, up close here in a moment. So zooming in on part of the plot, let's look over what the different lines represent. The horizontal lines represent pressure levels, one of which is highlighted in purple here. In this plot, they are labeled every 50 millibars, and the lines are separated into 10, 10 millibar increments. Soundings generally contain two lines. One, the bold red line here, represents temperature, and the bold green line represents the dew point. The slanted, or skewed, temperature lines are highlighted here, or at least one example is highlighted here in purple. The red dot represents a temperature of 20 degrees C, near 830 millibars. The dew point at the same pressure level is about 19 degrees C. The labels for each line are shown here and are plotted in increments of one degree Celsius. Although they are faint, if you look closely, you will see dashed green lines that also slant upward and to the right. One is highlighted here in purple. These are lines of constant mixing ratio. The labels for these lines are shown at the bottom in various increments. At 880 millibars in this sounding, the mixing ratio is about 18 grams per kilogram. You can get this by looking at where the green line is at 880 millibars and seeing which dashed green line it intersects with. The saturation mixing ratio can be determined by where the temperature plot intersects lines of constant mixing ratio. So at the same height, or pressure level, the saturation mixing ratio is closer to about 20 grams per kilogram. Dry adiabats, or lines of constant potential temperature, are highlighted here. Potential temperature is defined as the temperature that a parcel would have if it descended adiabatically to 1,000 millibars. Therefore, dry adiabats and isotherms with the same value intersect at 1,000 millibars. In this example, the potential temperature at 910 millibars is about 32 degrees Celsius, or 305 K. The purple line now represents a moist adiabat, or a line of constant equivalent potential temperature. They are labeled by the wet bulb potential temperature associated with each adiabat and labeled up here. The slope of the red temperature lines relative to the adiabats helps quickly determine the static stability of an observed profile in layers of interest. At high altitude, the moist and dry adiabats converge eventually as the temperature lowers and the saturation specific humidity goes to zero. At this point, you should be familiar with a few quantities. On the next slide, we'll look at how to find potential temperature, or theta, equivalent potential temperature, or theta E, and saturated equivalent potential temperature, or theta ES, also noted sometimes as theta E star, the definitions of which are laid out here on this slide. Suppose we have this hypothetical sounding with profiles of temperature and dew point, shown in red and green respectively, and we are interested in the values of the three variables previously mentioned at 900 millibars. The dew point and temperature at 900 millibars are denoted by the blue dots. The temperature and dew point are respectively about 25 degrees Celsius and 21 degrees Celsius. Potential temperature is found by simply following the dry adiabat that the temperature profile intersects at 900 millibars down to 1000 millibars and reading off the temperature. It represents the temperature of dry air after it moves adiabatically up or down to 1000 millibars. Once you become more familiar with skew-t plots, you can simply read off the temperature corresponding with the appropriate dry adiabat without following the adiabat all the way down to 1000 millibars. 
The equivalent potential temperature is the temperature that air would have if it were dry adiabatically lifted to saturation, then lifted moist adiabatically until no water vapor remained, then descended dry adiabatically to 1000 millibars. It is a useful combined metric for describing the moisture and temperature of the environment, and like moist entropy, is conserved during reversible adiabatic processes. To compute theta e for this example on a skew-t plot, follow a dry adiabat upward from the temperature at 900 millibars, and simultaneously follow a line of constant mixing ratio upward from the dew point at 900 millibars. You may not be exactly on a line, but you may be on a, a you know, imaginary line that parallels the lines that are drawn on the chart. Note the moist adiabat where the two lines intersect right here, then follow that moist adiabat all the way up until it parallels the dry adiabats in the upper troposphere. This is where essentially all water vapor has been removed from the parcel. The value of the dry adiabat you end up on is the equivalent potential temperature. Note that the values of dry adiabats, particularly ones with high values, are also listed on the top and the right axes of the plot. The saturation equivalent potential temperature is simply a function of temperature and pressure. It describes the maximum possible equivalent potential temperature of air if it reached saturation at the specified temperature and pressure. For a temperature of 25 degrees C at 900 millibars, follow the moist adiabat all the way up until it parallels a dry adiabat. Like you did for theta E, read off the value of the dry adiabat to get saturation theta E. Some other variables you may encounter include virtual potential temperature, which is the potential temperature needed by dry air to have the same density as air with some specified mixing ratio. You sometimes see theta V used in expressions for buoyancy. The dry and moist adiabatic lapse rates describe the temperature change experienced by a rising parcel per unit altitude as it moves up a dry or moist adiabat, respectively. The dry adiabatic lapse rate is about 9.8 Kelvin per kilometer, and the moist adiabatic lapse rate varies with pressure, but is roughly 5 Kelvin per kilometer in the lower troposphere. The environmental lapse rate simply describes the temperature change with height actually observed in the environment. Comparisons of the environmental lapse rate to the dry and moist adiabatic lapse rates help us assess environmental instability. In this example, the slope of the red line denotes the environmental lapse rate. In the blue box, bounded by 700 and 800 millibars, the environmental temperature profile has a slope greater than that of the moist adiabatic lapse rate. This is the moist adiabat right here in green, and the red line has a steeper slope. But the slope is less than that of the dry adiabatic lapse rate, or less than the slope of these dry adiabats here. So the environmental lapse rate is somewhere between 5 and 9.8 Kelvin per kilometer, perhaps about 7 Kelvin per kilometer if I had to estimate. For completely dry air, we can use vertical gradients of potential temperature to assess stability. However, for moist applications, we are concerned about the stability of moist, but not necessarily saturated air. For this, we consider the vertical gradient of saturation equivalent potential temperature, which you may recall as a function of temperature and pressure. If the environmental lapse rate exceeds the dry adiabatic lapse rate, the environment is absolutely unstable. In this case, the slope of the temperature profile would exceed that of a dry adiabat. If it is less than the moist adiabatic lapse rate, meaning that the vertical gradient of theta E S is positive, then the environment is absolutely stable. In this case, the slope of the temperature profile would be less than that of even a moist adiabat. A moist neutral temperature profile is one that follows a moist adiabat, and a conditionally unstable environment is one in which the environmental lapse rate is between the dry and the moist adiabatic lapse rates. Both absolutely unstable and conditionally unstable environments have negative vertical gradients of saturation equivalent potential temperature. However, the two stability metrics can be separated by assessment of the environmental lapse rate. A conditionally unstable environment is one in which a parcel can become unstable if it is lifted to saturation, or the lifted condensation level, dry adiabatically, and then onward moist adiabatically to the pressure level at which it is warmer than the environment. This latter level is known as the level of free convection. Finally, stability can be diagnosed in different layers. The same sounding can contain stable, conditionally unstable, 
and absolutely unstable layers. Mean profiles of tropical pot potential temperature, theta E, and saturation theta E are shown here. On average, you can see that motions below about 500 millibars are stable to dry motions by looking at the theta profile, but the environment would be considered conditionally unstable because saturation theta E decreases with height in the lower troposphere. The typical tropical atmosphere becomes nearly moist neutral in the mid to upper troposphere, and of course the atmosphere rapidly becomes stable above the tropopause. The next module, which is a companion to this one, will focus on an interpretation of skew-t thermodynamic diagrams.